So in this tutorial, we are going to be looking at the independent samples t-test. And the independent samples t-test is utilized to compare two groups on a variable of interest. So say, for example, I am interested in learning whether or not um, students who are in fraternities or sororities are more likely to be frequent users of alcohol in, term, in terms of their current usage. So I have to do a comparison between people who are fraternity or sorority members and people who are not fraternity or sorority members. So again, the variable that I'm looking at is frat. So F. And as you can see, no is not a fraternity or sorority member and one is a fraternity and sorority member. And in terms of current usage of alcohol, I'm going to use variable C7. Variable C7, um, lower values actually are as abstainer, so abstainer, former drinker, infrequent drinker, light drinker, moderate drinker, heavy drinker, problem drinker. So the higher values actually in, um, indicate um, greater frequency of alcohol consumption. So what I'm going to do now is to do a, a independent sample t-test to compare um, fraternity or sorority members. Okay, so let's go. So in order to do this, I will go to analyze, compare means, independent sample t-test. So my test variable here is the C7, which is current alcohol use, because that is the one that I want to see if the groups differ significantly on, right? So C7. And my grouping variable is going to be fraternity or sorority membership. So I am going to go to frat and I'm going to bring it into where it says grouping variable. Now something else, that I need to do is I need to define my groups. So go to define groups. And what you normally do is say which group should be grouped, um, the, 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 um, the, 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 the anchor group and which group should be the comparison group. So your group one is the group that is going to be an anchor group because what happens in the, T, the, the test is that it will take an average usage of um the fraternity and sorority members it will take the average usage of the non-fraternity and sorority members and they will compare them to each other so whichever group you think will have the higher usage level um you go ahead and make that group one and the group that you expect to have a lower usage level you go ahead and make that group two and that will ensure that your differences are um positive so I am not quite sure what to expect, but what I will do is I'm going to make fraternity or sorority members be group one and non-fraternity or sorority members group two. Um, just based on, you know, watching movies and seeing people always drinking crazy. So let us continue. So once we have done that, we are going to select exclude cases listwise, which means that only persons who have answered both questions will be um, included. So we're going to continue and we're going to paste. So let us go now to the syntax file and find our t-test syntax, and we're going to run that one. And immediately, we're seeing the t-test results. And this, as you can see, I was correct in my assumption. The average for persons who are fraternity or sorority members in terms of current use is 3.9. Bearing in mind that higher values are going to equal to higher usage. And look, um, real well, the, the, there is a lower average for the persons who are not fraternity or sorority members. So this is now um, 
straight off the bat, we're seeing some kind of difference here. When we look now at the t-test results, we see first the Levine's test for equality of variances. And the Levine's test for equality of variances um, is going to tell us which line of the output to interpret. Bearing in mind that, again, every, every time you see sig, if sig is less than 0 0.05, then the test is significant. If it is greater than 0 0.05, then the test is not significant. So in this instance, we see the value of 0 0.000. So therefore, we know that the Levine's test is um, significant. When the Levine's test is significant, we would say equal variances are not assumed. When the Levine's test is significant, equal variances are not assumed. When the Levine's test is not significant, then we say equal variances are assumed. Again, when the Levine's test is not significant, we say that equal variances are assumed. So in this instance, we see the Levine's test being significant. So we know straight off the bat that equal variances are not assumed. So we will read the line that corresponds with equal variances not assumed. So it is a T test. So the important thing to read is the T value, the degree of freedom, the significance. So straight off the bat, we see that the T value is 14.26. The degree of freedom is 15.77.07. And the significance is 0 0.00. So this is the T test. And here we will see that the T test is significant. So we can say that there is significant difference in current alcohol usage when we compare um, fraternity or sorority members to non-fraternity or sorority members. We see here that fraternity, fraternity and sorority members drink more alcohol more frequently than non-fraternity or sorority members because we see the mean difference, which is the difference um, in the averages between this group and this group. So if you were to um, compare those means, 3.90 minus 3.27, you should um, get the mean difference of 0.63. Okay? So this mean difference of 0.63. So again, the independent sample t-test is going to compare two groups on a variable of interest. We normally choose the group that we think has the higher average to be our group one and make the group that has we think will have the lower average to be our group two. In this instance, we thought persons who were fraternity or sorority members would have higher um, alcohol consumption, right? And so we made them group one. We utilize the Levine's test for equality of variances to determine which line of our T output to read, understanding that if the T test is significant, then equal, if the Levine's test is significant, then equal variances are not assumed, whereas if it is not significant, then equal variances are assumed. In this instance, we saw that equal variances were not assumed. So therefore, we were to interpret our second line, and this is what tells us if there are significant differences. We see a T output of 14.26, a degree of freedom of 15.77, and significance of 0 0.00, which is less than our cutoff of 0 0.05, um, indicating that there is a significant difference between um, fraternity and sorority members, it would be ideal to say which group is more. And we see here that persons who are fraternity or sorority members tend to drink more than persons who are not fraternity or sorority members. All right. So this is the um, independent samples T-test.